In the Northern Territory of Israel, at the top of an enormous precipice, a magnificent panorama unfolds before your eyes. The view from Mount Carmel is spectacular, and the grandeur of this place has for generations lured countless numbers of visitors who have come here to not only take in the grand vistas, but also to remember the epic duel between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. The name Carmel means vineyard of God or garden growth. And the Bible tells us that King Uzziah employed vine dressers and farmers in the mountains of Carmel. King Solomon compared the beauty of his beloved to the magnificence of Carmel, and prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah used the lushness of this area as a metaphor for what God's people would experience when they were restored to the land after their punishment and captivity. As one peers across the Carmel Range, it is easy to imagine why peoples of antiquity came to settle here. On top of Mount Carmel, one might feel as though they were closer to the heavens. And if you were a Canaanite, or perhaps an Israelite influenced by pagan theology, you might very well be attracted to this place, believing it to be a likely location to encounter the revered storm god called Baal. The Canaanite word for Baal simply means Lord. But the legendary 1929 discovery of the Rosh Ra text revealed that to the Canaanites, Baal was the ruler of heaven as well as a god of fertility and agriculture. Among Baal's titles were Rider of the Clouds, Almighty, and Lord of the Earth. At times he was portrayed as holding a scepter in the shape of a lightning bolt, and sadly, many of the Israelites fell prey to this erroneous view of an alleged Canaanite rainmaker. And they failed to remember the covenant God had made with his people Israel, which said, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all of your heart and with all your soul. Then I will give you the rain for your land in its season Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. In utter disregard for the covenant, King Ahab of Israel adopted the culture of the Canaanites and built an altar and temple in Samaria for both Baal and his female consort. This idolatrous worship caused the prophet Elijah to pronounce a curse upon Israel, which brought a severe drought to the land and direct assault on Baal, the alleged god of fertility and rain. After three and a half long years with no rain, Elijah called for a duel on Mount Carmel. It was here that Elijah called into question their religious devotion. How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him, but if Baal, follow him. The Israelites were at a geographic and religious impasse and they needed to stop their compromise. It was then that Elijah gave instruction for two altars to be built with a challenge to the prophets of Baal to call upon their alleged God to consume with fire one of the sacrifices and then for Jehovah God to consume the other. Baal, the storm god with his scepter of lightning, could not ignite the fire, but Jehovah God, however, could and did, and thereafter brought the needed rain to end the drought. Today, on one of the highest points along the Mount Carmel Range, stands a statue in a monastery dedicated to the memory of Elijah and his victory over idolatry. While it is true that no one today knows the precise location of this epic duel, we do know that the cultural and geographical context associated with this biblical event is absolutely consistent with the findings of both geography and archeology. span The location and reason for the duel are in perfect harmony with the facts of history. So while the view from Mount Carmel is spectacular, 
It is also enlightening. It confirms a powerful connection between fact and faith right here in the land of the Bible.